everyone, I'm teacher Nora from Kangaroo Study. Have you ever heard of the SMO, the Singapore Mathematical Olympiad? It's quite interesting that every year around March to April, many students are automatically registered for SMO through their schools. However, actually many of their parents have never heard of the contest before, and they will be quite confused about mm, what the SMO is, and they will receive a lot of questions, checking the details, and the parents are very anxious. So, in this video, we are going to save you all the efforts, just take as short as 20 minutes to walk you through everything you need to know about the SMO from its structure to its preparation and we hope this video helps you and your child to feel more confident and well prepared for this contest. So let's get started. In this video, we are going to introduce the SMO in mainly three parts. First, to talk about what is SMO with a brief introduction and then explain its procedure and rules. And after that, we'll show you the timeline of 2025 for your reference. And next and most importantly, we'll explain to you why SMO is important, which is also the part most parents are curious about, including how can students benefit from joining SMO, what does it take to win a medal, and how are students selected for future opportunities. And lastly, we'll share with you the details of how to join and prepare from the registration process to a full preparation timeline for a secondary one student. Also, we will cover the key topics, recommend some strategies and learning materials to help you get ready. We'll start with what is SMO. Well, organized by the Singapore Mathematical Society since 1950s, SMO also stands for the Singapore Mathematical Olympiad. It's Singapore's oldest mathematics competition. According to its official website, the objective of this competition is to test the ingenuity and mathematical problem-solving ability of the participants and to discover and encourage mathematical talents in Singapore. So, it's a good platform for students who enjoy challenges and want to stretch their mathematical thinking beyond the school syllabus. Every year in early June, SMO will be held with three sections and two rounds. As you can see from the table on the left, the three sections are junior, senior, and open, each targeted students of different age groups. The junior section is mainly open to students born on or after January the 2nd, 2011, which includes those in secondary 1 to 2. Based on our estimates, a huge number of around 3,500 students are expected to register for the first round. The senior section is for students born on or after January the 2nd, 2009, typically those in secondary 3 to 4, with about 2,500 participants each year. What's special is the open section, which is open to all secondary students, ranging from senior 1 all the way to junior college. About 1,800 students will sign up for this section every year. Now for the timeline and rules of each round, let's take a look at the table on the right. Each section will have two rounds, for both junior and senior section, round 1 will be started from June the 3rd, 2025, from 9.30 to 12, with the duration of 2.5 hours. The results will be released within 2 weeks, and they will decide who gets to enter round 2. And then, round 2 will be held on June 28th, 2025. For the junior section, it runs from 9 to 12, lasting 3 hours. For the senior section, it's also from 9, but takes 1 more hour, and at 1 in the afternoon. As you can see, both rounds of the junior and senior section take place on the same day at the same time. Because of this timing clash, students cannot take both. Things are different for the open section. As you can see, round 1 of the open section takes place in June the 4th, 2025 from 9.30 to 12, which is one day later than the previous two sessions. And after the announcement of round 1 result within two weeks, the open section round 2 will be held on July the 5th, 2025, which is a week later starts from 9 to 1 in the afternoon. So in this case, there's no timing clash between the open section and other two sections. That means students can choose to join the open section in addition to the section of their own. Additionally, many parents with kids in secondary 1 have asked us whether it's necessary for their kids to sign up for the open section. Well, our suggestion would be can, but do take note that the open section is much more challenging since it's open to all students from secondary 1 even to junior college. The question often includes advanced topics that young students haven't come across before. But it can still be a great opportunity to get an early exposure to a high level of questions and can be helpful to prepare for future competitions. Now let's talk about the difference in question types between round 1 and round 2. For round 1, the paper includes 5 multiple choice questions and 20 short answer questions. The duration is 2.5 hours and each question was 1 mark for a total of 25 marks. The questions are often quite tricky and also it's important to note that in round 1, all questions are numerical only with no working required. 
while on the other hand, round 2 consists of 5 long-form problems that require full-length solutions. It lasts 3 hours and each question carries 10 marks, making a total of 50 marks. For round 2, the focus is on clear working, logical reasoning, and whether you can present everything in a proper way. Here we can see two sample questions from round 1 and round 2. Topic-wise, the two questions are all about finding a root for a quadratic equation. And you can see for the round 1 question, you only need to fill in the final answer, no need to show your working. However, for the round 2 question, you must clearly show your reasoning at every step of solution to get the marks. The examiner will award marks based on how complete and clear your solution is. So, we can conclude that round 2 is way harder compared to round 1. Now, hope you have a clear picture of how SMO works. Our teachers at Kendrew Study have put together all the key information about SMO 2025 in this table. I will leave it on the screen for a few seconds so you can take a screenshot and save it for later reference. If you still have any questions, feel free to scan the QR code to join our group chat or reach out directly to our teachers. We'll be very happy to help. Now, let's move on to the part that probably parents are most curious about. Why is SMO important and how can it benefit our kids? Let's say if you do well in SMO, it will first help with DSA Junior College applications, especially those top schools that look out for strong math students. And it's also very useful when applying for a university or a scholarship in the future. Having SMO achievement in your portfolio basically shows that you can think critically and logically, not just memorizing textbook knowledge. And the best part, if you do really, really well, chances are you might get selected for the training teams of National Mathematical Olympia, join the junior or senior training team, or if you do even better, the national training team, from where you can be further selected as one of the members of national team to represent Singapore at the IMO, the International Mathematical Olympiad, which is like the Olympics of Math, a contest that is super prestigious and internationally recognized. To be short, all this experience will definitely give you a big boost in your future academic pathway and personal development. Now comes to the key part, how many scores do you need to win a medal in SMO? Before we dive in, just to give a quick note, all estimates here are based on our internal data and do not reflect any official evaluation criteria. Cutoff scores and medal ratios may vary each year and are not officially released. So the following information is for reference only just to help you and your child better prepare for the competition. So let's get started. Let's take SMO junior section as an example and we will go through it in a bottom-up sequence. All students start from round 1, which is mark out of 25. If you score above 8, you might receive an honorable mention. If you score above 10, you may get a bronze medal. And if you score above 12, you may win a silver medal. For those who manage to get 14 or 15 marks, they could be qualified for round 2. Based on our past year data, each year there are around 3,500 participants signed up for the first round of junior section but only about 100 to 120 students make it to the round 2. That makes the chance of entering round 2 less than 3%. So now you can see just how valuable it is to even be qualified for round 2. After round 2 is completed, based on the combined scores from round 1 and round 2, they will decide whether students are awarded the gold medal. The total score of round 1 and round 2 is out of 75, and usually you need to score 35 or above to get a gold. Each year, around 60 students are awarded gold, and then the rest of the round 2 qualifiers will receive silver medals. That saying, once you enter round 2, you are already guaranteed at least a silver. Now, here's something even more exciting. Once you've entered round 2, there will be also a selection process for the junior training team of Mathematical Olympiad. And this selection is only based on your round 2 performance. Each year, about 30 to 35 students are chosen to join the junior training team, from where they will go through a special training sessions, and after that, they will take an internal test to see whether they can be promoted to the senior training team. And of course, at the same time, the senior training team also selects strong students directly from the senior section of SMO. Okay, I know this is a lot of information to take in at one time and might be a little overwhelming for you, so let's break it down in a simpler way. The staircase here shows the achievement pathway students can follow by taking part in the SMO junior section along with the estimated ranking required to be qualified for each stage. It starts all the way from round 1 to round 2 and then possibly into the junior or senior training teams. But of course, we have to be realistic. Only a very small number of students are able to reach the top. With 3,500 participants each year, 
just qualifying for round two is already a major achievement for most of the students. Lastly, there's one more thing to note. Even if students make it into the junior or senior training team, it does not guarantee a spot in the national training team or to represent Singapore at the IMO contest. So the big question is, what does it really take to be standing on the stage of IMO and represent the nation? The only answer is to sign up for the SMO Open section. In this staircase, we can see the achievement pathway of SMO Open. It's actually quite similar to the junior and senior sections. You will need to first rank among the top 100 students in round one to qualify for round two. And then selection for the national training team is based only on your round two performance as well. If you rank among top 30 to 35 in round two, you will be selected for the national training team. And lastly, from this team, only six students will be chosen to represent Singapore on the IMO stage. Now let's take a look at what our students have achieved during the past two years. In 2023, we have 10 students take part in SMO Junior and all of them made to round two. Six students ranked in the top 30, four in the top 10, and five were selected for the junior training team. In 2024, we had even more students, 90 in total, and again, 100% entered the second round. And then 16 students were selected for the junior training team. Even though our students made up less than 1.5% of all participants, they accounted for 25% of the second round students. And lastly, the biggest highlight is one of our students was selected for the 2024 IMO Singapore National Team and went on to win the Singapore's only gold medal, ranking 14th in the world. These are all very, very impressive results. So here comes the last part. For secondary one students, how can we join and prepare for the SMO? Let's take this year's overall timeline as an example. It's better for students to begin preparation after PSLE starting from last year, October. The registration usually happens between March to April and all sign ups must be done through your school. So parents, please pay attention to school announcements or ask your teacher in charge to help with registration. Then, as mentioned before, round one of the SMO junior section will take place on June the 3rd and results will be announced within two weeks. If you are qualified for round two, it will be held on June 28th and afterwards, the final results will be released within three months. So now that you know all the timeline, the next step is to plan your preparation early and stay informed. Also, we are aware that some students might also feel unsure about what kind of knowledge is tested in SMO. So next part, let's take a closer look at the main knowledge areas covered in the SMO Junior section. According to our teacher's analysis of past year papers, questions mainly cover three areas, algebra, primary Olympiad, and geometry. This pie chart below shows the topic distribution of round one over the past three years. We can see that algebra makes up the largest portion, around 43 of the questions. The next major topic is primary Olympia, which accounts for about 33%. And the remaining 20 comes from geometry. Now looking at round two. There was no paper in 2022 due to the COVID. So based on the papers of the past two years, we found that the main topics may include number theory, geometry, counting, and algebra. Then let's talk about the three main knowledge areas tested in round one. First, for primary Olympiad knowledge, after reviewing past year papers, our teachers found that the difficulty level is roughly similar to RMO and SMO peers. Now, for those who are familiar with primary school Olympiad math, you might know that the topic list can be very long. So, will all these topics be tested in SMO round 1? Luckily, no! Many of the topics are not covered anymore, and when you filter them out, you will realize, wow, more than half of the topics are gone. So, if you are planning to revise your primary Olympiad knowledge, you really just need to focus on the remaining key topics that are actually tested. Then, what about the knowledge from school? This table shows all the topics have been tested in SMO excluding the primary Olympiad knowledge. And among them, we've marked out the topics that are typically covered in secondary one school curricula. We can see compared to the full range of tested topics, the content taught in schools only covers a small portion. In fact, 69% of the topics haven't been taught in secondary one. So what students learn in school is far from enough to prepare for SMO. Also, some parents may ask about uh, for the topics already taught in school, right? Does my child need any extra learning? The answer is still yes, because the difficulty and depth of SMO questions are much higher than what's taught in school. So even for familiar topics, school level practice is also not deep enough. 
Then what to do? No worries, at Kangaroo Study, we offer web design exploration classes that not only cover unfamiliar topics, but also deepen students' understanding of what they've learned in class. So if you're interested, feel free to contact our teacher at the end of this video to learn more about our courses. Now that we understand how challenging and wide-ranging SMO questions can be, so then let's be practical. Talk about the best preparation strategy for secondary one students. As I've mentioned earlier, only about 3% of students can make it through round one to round two, which is already extremely hard. So for the majority of students, the smartest strategy is actually to first focus on securing a strong round one performance, then gradually work towards preparing for round two. Well, of course, the exact strategy depends on your current level. So that's why we also created this single chart to help you set goals for yourself. Let's say if you're doing well in school and had strong results in Premier Olympia, you can actually aim higher, try to advance to round two and even strive for a gold medal. If you are doing well in school, but only had a decent Olympiad results, uh, then a good goal will be aim for a silver medal first and work towards qualifying for round two. If you are doing well academically but have no Olympia experience, it's also okay. Start aiming for a bronze and as you improve, push forward to a silver. And lastly, if you're not yet doing well in school, uh, it's okay too. Your priority should be solidify your foundation first before moving on to further and more advanced topics. And lastly, here are some recommended materials to help you prepare for SMO. For books, the first one is our very popular, the SMO Junior 10 Years Past Papers. What's special about this book is that our teachers have reorganized all the questions by topic. This is extremely helpful because many students would feel overwhelmed the first time they try SMO past year papers. With so many unfamiliar concepts piling up altogether, they might not even know where to begin and end up losing confidence and motivation. But with the questions grouped by topic, students can first practice each concept individually, then they will move on to a full mock paper after building a solid understanding, which will make the preparation much more efficient and effective. So if you're interested, you can scan the QR code to contact Teacher Wenlong and Teacher Jeremiah for access to this book. The second book is the Official SMO Solution Book, which contains detailed answers to past year papers. This one can be purchased directly from the website link. What's more, here are our two YouTube channels that can support your learning. In the Primary Math Olympiad channel, we provide analysis and explanation for questions from contests like RMO, APMOS, and SMOPS. So uh, if you want to revise the Primary Olympiad knowledge for SMO, you can search for the related topics. The second channel is for Singapore's Secondary Math, where our teachers will regularly upload videos explaining challenging questions, not only from SMO, but also within school curriculum. So feel free to scan the QR code to follow and stay tuned. So that's all for our video today. Feel free to scan the QR code to join our S1 learning group and to contact teacher Jeremiah or teacher Wenlong directly for more course information. And at the very end, I just want to say SMO is more than just a competition. Regardless of its outcome, your child will gain valuable experience, grow in resilience, and develop strong thinking skills in this process. And that's why we say it's a stepping stone to deeper learning and future success. Thank you for watching and we hope this video has been helpful to you and your child. Bye bye!